capture a bride. And then some people must prepare that bride. And those people must be on a realm that other people are not. Where they will fear them. A realm of right living. Now, and you young man, listen to me. Somebody must know it. The deed is already done. So, you see a man that is God with power. And then he turns to another person. Self and tell God, this is my zero hour. Power of peace. Five, four, three, two, one. We are going to rise up and sing song number 198. Are you looking for the fullness of blessing of the Lord in your heart and life today? Claim the promise of your Father. Come according to his word in the blessed old time way. Bring your empty earthen vessels clean through Jesus' precious blood. Come ye needy one and all. And a human consecration wait before the throne of God till the Holy Ghost shall come. I the cruise of oil unfailing is his grace forevermore. And his love unchanging still and according to his promise of the Holy Ghost and power, he will every vessel feel. <laughs>
As you keep standing, you need to pray. Agree. There is need for recreation, reformatting, recreation. There is need for recreation of our hearts. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. for somebody by you and pray for yourself pray for the person pray for the person that is on your left and the person that is on your right and pray for me you cannot be praying for somebody and hurt the person we leave the things that we should do and go and do useless things <laughs> Let's round off our prayers. Let's round off our prayers. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. Listen. Still on that note, I want you to pray. For the person on the left and the right, still asking the Father of our Lord Jesus to remove anything that is disturbing the person in the form of illness, in the form of anything, any unwanted thing. Tell the Lord to remove it. In the life of the person, in the family life, the wife of the person, in the children of the person. Hallelujah. Round of our prayers. Round of your prayers. And open your song book to song number two hundred. Song number two hundred. Song number 200 Come Holy Ghost Creator come From thy bright heavenly throne Come take possession of our souls And make them all die.
king. Lover of our souls, bishop and shepherd of our souls, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our father. We are done for if you don't come. We are finished unless you stay by us. That is the truth, Lord. If any man can do without thee, I can't. Lord, if any man can live without thee, I, Aloysius, can't. If you didn't safeguard me, if you didn't restrain me when I was growing up, I will have grown wings and flown away. That would be no salvation. I have told men that the way I valued education, if by the time I was to pass standard six in 1958, I had passed standard six in 1958 and had a father. My father was... Uh, government man respected and I went to a secondary school a popular one a great one's institutions of those old days in 1959 I will have come out with Cambridge school certificate in 1963 and I was sure of grade one and if I went to university then following year by now I will be a professor above professors and I may be, not even in this country, I may have grown wings and said that there is no God. But you made me to lose my father, and I shouldn't know him. I thank you for everything. For if not that, I will have grown wings and flown away. You restrained me and eventually saved me preserved me during the war many opportunities to die and even after the war and then saved me to serve you to deep the glory what else am I talking about talking anything else is stupidity thank you great father and I know that there are people here that have some kind of testimony similar to mine God restrained them and later on saved them and then preserved them and then saved them. My Father, my God. So to thee be the glory. Great things you have done. What shall man do? Shall we kill a cow? It's no more necessary. Shall we burn the fat of sheep? no more necessary thou hast smelled even the sweet aroma suiting aroma in the day that Christ died on the cross and that ends it and that cross that sacrifice is speaking volumes you are still smelling the suiting aroma of that cross and that is the reason when somebody comes and says Lord forgive me because of the cross you will just say I agree and you cannot but forgive the person so long as the person is sincere Lord I come to you this afternoon not to talk rubbish I come to thee to thank you I come to thee to bless thee and bless thee blessing thee on the behalf of the people on the behalf of the people and I I say praise be to the Lord Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to the Holy Spirit. Blessed Trinity, one God. Praise be to thee that we know the Lord. There are people that do not know him. We have the spirit, at least the endless of the spirit, many. There are people that don't have, who are asking where does Jesus Christ come from? Is he an Indian or is he a Nigerian? Because they are confused. Never heard about him. What a privilege, Lord. 
and not just this privilege of salvation but the privilege of being called into this uh, glorious uh, and uh, special ministry great father in heaven and i'm excited about it great father in heaven and i stand to protect it blessed redeemer lord here we come we come not to fulfill some obligation of january meeting i didn't come here for fun i came here by the god of mercy might take over take over everybody and i know that you can take over you can take over the minds you can take over the eyes you can take over the hearts you can take over the intellect you can take over the emotions you can take over the psychological system you can take over every part of man even the physiological system of man take over take over lord and do every person good come holy ghost creator come lord in glory we praise you lord i invite you i welcome you if anybody thinks that he can do without the holy ghost the person is foolish does not know anything jesus couldn't do without the holy ghost he came from heaven but we came from our mother's wombs our mothers met our fathers and then we were born jesus father did not meet jesus mother and he, the word of god personified living side by side the spirit of god by this living side by side as a spirit being and then the word was made flesh incarnate world and he entered as photos into the womb of a person and when the time came he needed to be baptized with the holy spirit lord if he needed it we much more it was written concerning him that he had the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of knowledge the spirit of the fear of the lord precious master who can do without the spirit lord these people are not responding i don't know whether they can do without the spirit precious father welcome holy spirit lord if anybody is saying i can't do without thee lord meet the person meet the person if any man any woman any young person any old person is saying lord i can't do without you lord meet the person and you will hear my recommendation thank you very much i have the privilege of making recommendation and then the recommendation is honored you honor them that honor you thank you because you are mighty thank you because you are gracious thank you because you are alive thank you because you are coming again thank you because the world belongs to you thank you because the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof thank you because jesus is coming thank you because the heavens are coming thank you because the heaven will march with the earth after he has ruled for one thousand years everything is metamorphosing everything is metamorphosing everything is clicking on everything is shaping up the things written are coming true thank you holy spirit spirit divine thank you holy spirit tumble the people tumble everybody tumble everybody tumble lord tumble tumble everybody tumble me remove nonsense remove our minds conquer us conquer us conquer us conquer us let me hear you saying i need to be conquered you need to be conquered i need to be conquered your mind needs to be conquered open your mouth and tell the lord to conquer you let the lord conquer you pray so that you don't carry your mind you carry the mind of christ
this place. As the prophet said it should be. All over this place. There is a mighty revelation. Of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. All over this place, the Spirit is moving. All over this place, as the prophet said he should be. Oh, yes, all over this place. There is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. Oh yes, as the waters cover the sea. Right here in our midst. Right here in our midst. The Spirit he is moving right here in our midst as the prophet said it should be right here in our midst there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. Oh, yes. As the waters cover the sea. Lord, I bless your name because uh, I know you have an answer. You are here. It is evident. Uh, why will the Lord not be here? Is the Lord not needed? Are we not in need? Lord, are we not in need? Are we not in need? Is the church not in need? Is that not a cause? Is that no reason that the Spirit of the Lord should take over? Is that no reason? Is that not a cause? Is that not a reason David should come to the war front? Is that not a cause he should be asking the questions? Was there no defiling of the armies of the children of Israel? What was his sin? And what is my sin? Is that not a need? Don't I see dilapidation in the church? Don't I see rubbish things? Is there not a need? Lord, is that not a cause? Is that not a need? I bless your name. Thank you because you are great. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you this before you pray again. And I talk on come Holy Spirit. Take note, wherever you are. Long ago, long, long ago, when revival sprouted out, and we used to go for revival hour, and then the Holy Spirit would be moving, and the congregation would be on fire. 
And the man of God will be dishing out words. Words that were clear. They came from the Holy Spirit. I saw individuals that were unconcerned. And they were even leaders. I didn't bother myself. Everybody will give account of his own life to God. And some of the people are falling away, those people. And I'm not surprised. Don't let anybody make you to be like him unless the person is better. If you see somebody that is better, endeavor to be like the person. If I am leading you into something, take it. I came in here to talk about another thing. He told me to talk about the need of the Holy Spirit. So that the people, because without him, you, we are done for. If he doesn't return to the church and check it, Sin will continue. Let me ask you, those of you that are there, who will heal you? The hospital will heal you. Who will open your eyes? Who opened the eyes of Isaiah? How can you see? If it does not brood upon you, who opened the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar to know the fourth person was had the form of a son of God? Why should I be talking about the Holy Ghost and then you are sleeping? Come, Holy Spirit, Creator, come. You should desire Him. And it should come. Thank you, Lord of glory. Lord, I need you. I need the Holy Spirit. I need to have a complete of a whole. And when it happens, I will know it. And people will know it. Hallelujah. Let's round off our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayer. Amen. Now sit down. Come, Holy Spirit. Open your Bible to Psalm 104. Psalm 104 is uh, talking about the handiwork of God in creation. We are going to read... From verse 1 to verse 30. Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covereth thyself with light as with a garment, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who may walk it upon the wings of the wind, 
maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flame and fire, who led the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment, the waters have stood above the mountains. And I rebuke the flood, at the voice of thy thunder, the hasted away, the go up by the mountains and the go down by the valleys, unto the place which thou hast founded for them, thou hast set the bound, that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills, they give drink to every beast of the field, the wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heavens have their habitation, which sing among the branches, water the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and half for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil that make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he had planted, where the best make their nests. As for their stock, the fair trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons and sun know it is going down. I make it darkness and it is night. Therein all the wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar after their prayer and seek their meat from God. The sun arises, they gather themselves together and let them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor. Until the evening, O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom as thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches, so is this great sea, the white and white sea, great and white sea, wherein are all things creeping innumerable. Both small and great beasts, there go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast met, O play therein. This wait upon all upon thee, and thou givest, mayest, mayest give them their meat in due season. That that thou givest, givest them, givest them the gather. Thou openest thine hand, that they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their bread, they die. And return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, they have life, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit. And then I am asking you, as you are listening to me, to continue saying to yourself and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Come, Holy Spirit. You see, when you come to a meeting like this and uh, you are growing old, now growing old does not, is not uh, a reason why you should not uh, benefit. What is important is the attitude of your mind. The mindset, you may not have the strength to rise up, but you have strength in your mind to say, Lord, I need you. Come, Holy Ghost. We are giving him invitation by that topic. Come, Holy Ghost. As I came in here and we were listening to the choir and all that. And then as my mind was running, then I came to realize that, look, we cannot do without him. He has to be here from the world go. There are things that have to be done and they can only be done by the Holy Spirit. We shall see them in the scriptures. And sometimes we come, begin without inviting him, begin as if he is not necessary. If you push somebody away from around you, you are saying that person is not necessary. I can do without you. 
But look, we can't do without him. Then I'm asking, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is he? That's the first point we're looking at. Who is the Holy Spirit? The second point question is, what is his work? When you know who he is, and then you know what his work is, you will now know whether you need his work in your life. I need his work badly, particularly given the times that we're in. The present world needs Christ. The present world needs what? Christ. Small, small Christ. The present church needs small, small Christ. Otherwise, it will not work. It is because the present church has no Christ. That is the reason there is commotion. And the commotion will remain so long as there are no Christs. Come Holy Spirit. And I'm saying, who is the Holy Spirit? Is he? You may have heard this thing before. Is the Holy Spirit electric power? Electric current? No. Electric current can power many things. Can power a motor, can power an engine. Give us this light. But it doesn't have sense. It's not a human being, it's not a spirit being. It doesn't have sense. You can only do what is created to do when you do one thing or the other. The coil of the generator where the electric uh, current is generated. It is the me mechanical aspect of the something that turns the coil and then electric current is generated. That electric current is, that is generated can give light, can power anything, power the fan and power the, this mechanism that I'm using. But it doesn't have sense. It's not a spirit being. But the Holy Spirit is a being. There is need for somebody to understand what God is saying in the church. The Holy Spirit is a being. I've told you before. B E I N B E I N G. Just like you are a being, you are a human being. He is a spirit being. He doesn't have uh, that is kind of body that you can hold. That's why it's not that was called ghost. It's like your shadow. You cannot hold your shadow. But now, this shadow is a being, intelligible being, that can do mighty things, that can influence mighty things that can engineer mighty things, that can power mighty things and make mighty things, things incredible to happen. We see that he existed from time immemorial, from, from ageless past. He is that spirit of God that is inside God and outside God, the same spirit.
the same person inside God, outside God, inside Christ, outside Christ, inside the heavenly beings, inside the children of men that have him, and outside too. That spirit that is in you, the endness of the spirit, or a larger portion of him that was given to you at the time of baptism with the Holy Spirit, is the same spirit that is inside Christ. And the same spirit that is inside God. And that same spirit is outside the whole world and roving like the dog. In Genesis chapter 1, take this truth. In the beginning, verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. That is the summary. That is a summary. In the beginning, beginning of everything, not in the beginning of God. God does not have beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And then you know that we, some time ago we talked about the heaven. Three kinds of heaven. The first heaven, atmospheric heaven, the second heaven, and then the third heaven. And then he said the earth was formless, without form and void. And that darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over upon the face of the waters that is over what was he hovering for what was he hovering for hovering waiting for the word the word to come out what God wanted done to come out and then when the Lord said let there be light now that word and spirit brought the light out. Now listen to me. If you want to be a Christian, you want to reach heaven, want to make the rapture, if you read anything, you stumble into anything that is telling you contrary to this, that, that looks more reasonable, that looks more logical, that looks more scientific but is now questioning this thing is now putting doubt on this thing throw that knowledge away throw it away if you want to reach heaven so now he waited and then by him and the world, every other things were created and the recreation work took place. And then, to show you that he is not it. Not it. Put your finger where we are and let us turn to Romans chapter 8. There is something that is done there which you should correct. The rendering is not good. Reading verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, that is the Spirit of God, capital letter Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, our inadequacies. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself, no? But the Spirit, what? Himself. Maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Let me bright and tell you something. Even though I'm going to come to it, listen to me. You can pray your prayer. But as a man that is filled with the Holy Spirit, whose mind if a man or a woman whose mind has been conquered by the Holy Spirit 
is listening to that your prayer, he will know whether you are praying with your mind or whether the Spirit of God is making the prayer through you. And I can tell you, can tell many people, they have made prayers over these years, but they made prayers with their own minds. The things they said were the things they wanted to say. Now return to Genesis chapter 1. Still talking on who is he, the third person in the blessed trinity, in the Godhead. Now verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let the man and the woman, that's why he said let them, because he knew that he was going to make a woman have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In chapter 2, reading verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me. Now, in chapter 3, verse 22, Genesis 3, 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Please, if you want to be a Christian, please believe the record of the Bible, full stop. Even if your mind has been trained and uh, you have some science, you have some uh, technology, you have some whatever, believe the record of the Bible. Because if you don't believe the record of the Bible, you will lose your mind. You will have conflict. Drive away anything that wants to conflict with this let us make man in our image us means he recognizes that he the father the spirit that is inside him that is intangible that cannot be heard like you can hold this table like you can hold this concrete column that you can hold this fan, that you can hold the brother or the sister by you, that spirit that is inside him and outside him. And then Jesus Christ was tangible. His word that was inside him was intangible. You can't hold my word. You can't get hold of it and feel it. But that word came out and became a being by his side from endless ages. Let us, me, my spirit, my word, make man in our image. Third person in the Trinity. And when the Lord Jesus Christ was departing, and now gave some ordinances, when he was leaving his disciples with some ordinance, with some commission, he said something. And let's read. In Matthew chapter 28, we are reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 
Go ye there, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the three in one God, who made the heavens and the earth. In the name of the three in one God, three persons in one God. From time to time, I illustrate it. Right here as I am speaking, as I am sitting and speaking, you see me. I am tangible. But you can't see my spirit. And my spirit is inside me. You hear my word, the sound that I am producing. You hear it. But you can't hold it. It's intangible. But now in the case of God, it's like I am sitting. And his word now became a being and is staying by his right hand. Now his spirit that is inside him also is outside him. But that one is not an, a tangible being. Not somebody that you can hold. Listen to me. Even demons don't have flesh. That is the reason they possess men. That is the reason they can possess animals. They can enter. But they can assume flesh. They can metamorphose. But they are beings, intelligible beings. The man that was in the tombs, who had demons, and those demons constrained him, forced him. His mind was overpowered. All of his senses were overpowered. And then his mind was overpowered. And the spirit will move him, move his mind. And he will take a stone, a sharp stone, and be cutting himself. The thing will be paining him, but he wouldn't stop cutting. Something was living in him. The thing that was living in him was not tangible. That is about the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus Christ talked about him. That he was going to let him come. As he was departing. It was necessary that I depart. Because if I don't depart, he will not come. In John's Gospel, chapter 16. John 16, from verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, necessary. It is an exigency for you that I should go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you, not send it. And when he is come, he will reprove, convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment judgment to come he will convict the world of sin and you know what if the spirit of God has not convicted somebody of sin the person will not see sin of sin because they believe not in me he will convict them you didn't believe the one that God sent to be a propitiation. 
And as he is being preached, now the Spirit will convict people for not believing, and they will not believe. Convict them of sin. So, but the point we are making there is that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, recognized that, uh, that there is uh, the third person in the Holy Spirit. And in Luke chapter 24, we read this account. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding. Oh, praise God. These watchman people must know that uh, when the Lord is, uh, listen to me and look up, when the Lord has come to deal with us, you have to really appreciate it. We began the issue of eyes of understanding being opened and we have not ended. That is what we are going to continue in when we resume and then in the Easter meeting. Eyes of understanding being opened. These people that Jesus Christ joined on the journey did not recognize that it was the Lord. But they saw him physically. They didn't recognize. And he was asking them those questions and rebuked them fools. They only came to recognize when he disappeared but this is not the issue here the issue here is uh, that he was wanting to tell them that the holy spirit was coming he was wanting to tell them that the holy spirit was coming in the place where we are reading when i was uh, making reference to the people of a mouse going to a mouse their eyes were not opened their eyes were opened when he disappeared. Ah! Ah! When he was talking, there was a way they were talking. There was a way the words were doing in our hearts. Our hearts were burning. But we didn't recognize it is the law. And they ran to tell. We have seen him. My friends, we are in a day in the present world that has what? Has blanket. Dark, thick blanket everywhere. To do what? Cover your heart. It has covered the heart they have covered the hearts of many people, covered the hearts of many youths. Parents have helped to cover the hearts of their, of their children. In the name of love, in the name of being passionate about your children, listen to me. There is something that I have written which I have not told you but let me branch to tell you what is it i came in here i have told you that i came in here with the mind of jesse i didn't come in here to preach you if i have had an encounter with you three months ago three years ago and i am saying these things that i'm saying I am not saying them because I am addressing you. I am telling the truth as I should say them. What brought me to that? I said that many people have put, helped put blankets 
spiritual blanket over the senses of their children. And you will pay, but I don't want you to pay. Some people have done things and put blanket over the senses, over the minds of some other people in church. And the people say, I will not respond. I don't want to go to church. What brought me to all that? I want you to begin to appreciate what we began. Having our eyes of understanding enlightened, opened. Because if your eye of understanding is not opened as to the end of man, as to the end of all the rubbish, if you don't have your eyes of understanding opened as to the uselessness of man, as to the vanity as to vanity if your eyes of understanding are not opened you will pursue vanity can't you see how people that are in government are pursuing vanity and pursuing money and pursuing this can't you see how people that are in music uh, entertainment industry and all the people in the world can't you see how women and men are pursuing vanity? Their eyes are darkened. Your eyes cannot be opened and you pursue the way they are pursuing. It's not possible. It's not possible. If your eyes are opened as a young lady, listen to me, you will see these other young ladies that are doing bizarre things in the right perspective. And you cannot be them, you will just be pitying them. Full stop. If you are emulating them, your eyes are not opened, you are blind. Pastor, if you are pursuing this other pastor the way they are doing, you are blind. Brother, that is the truth. In fact, if you by any means, you don't appreciate what I am saying and what I am teaching, you are blind. If you can't see what I am saying, you are blind. Now, I just touched that. Now, but what we are trying to prove, Holy Spirit, third person in the Blessed Trinity, and the Lord Jesus Christ said that he was coming. The people should go and wait for him. And in verse 48, that is in Luke chapter 24, verse 48, and ye and he are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry wait ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high when that person that personality comes you will have a power from on high you will have spiritual energy you will have insight you will have boldness you will have love you will have understanding you will have fearlessness that's how you can simplify power from on high that's the detail you have wisdom you have boldness you have insight you will have understanding. You will have fearlessness. You will have eloquence. So, third person in the Blessed Trinity, what is his work? 
when I run through his work, then you will tell me how that you we want to stay in this world and then we are doing all the things that we're doing every time we come to the meeting and then we set him aside we tell him to step aside and he steps aside if you didn't call somebody to a, to, to a wedding does the person come if he comes there, he comes there and breezes in and breezes out. You didn't invite me. What is his work? We have read the work of conviction. How can you be convicted about the truth of the Bible? How that this thing goes to the letter? How can you be convinced about it? If the Holy Spirit did not yield that, that conviction inside you, how can you do how can you get it? How can you be convinced about God being alive, being existent? Jesus Christ is coming in the present world that they are wanting to prove by every means that there is no God. How can you be convinced? And you stick up your neck and say that is God. How come that Peter, according to church history, was to be executed? And then they wanted to execute him the way Christ was executed. He said, No, don't want to be executed like my master. Execute me head down. That's what I had. Now, but this was the Peter that swore at the threat of a, 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 a lady. You are one of them. He said, I never knew this man from, from Adam. I've said it before. Now I swear. How does he come? How come that this person now, after this master had gone, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. You agree? Yeah. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. Oh, great father. How come that Martin Luther, the reformer, how come that in the midst of decadence, of importation, of a conglomeration, of terrible things into the church now somebody a priest for that matter a priest that the first time he went to Rome the history says because of how he acclaimed the whole thing that he was holding he went on his knees, bowed down his head and said, Holy Rome, I greet you. How come that this man now went as he read the Bible over and over and another conviction gripped his heart and then he went to the church door and nailed all those things that he disagreed with and nailed the truth and then was brought into question and you remember the inquisition how multitudes of people died how come that people were put to the stake and burnt alive and they agreed if they were not convinced by the holy ghost roasted alive and they refused to recant. And Martin Luther came face to face with the hierarchy. And they gave him chance to recant and leave. You know what he said? I cannot recant. My mind has been taken captive by the word of God.
and he went on the ground because he knew that his own was finished who did it how come that Paul and his entourage, people traveling with him in the deadly sea not one day and the sea was raging and there was no hope how come that he should say man stop all your wahala let everybody eat food stop your f first, first fasting listen to me those people were not fasting for God to save them those people appetite left them did you hear me now when the sea was raging and you are calling for rice and beans sea is raging you are calling for tea have you been in the aircraft and then turbulence comes and then you are asking the air hostess to give you some tea everything they have placed on the table turned upside down and the pilot will tell them to go and sit down and you are calling for tea how come that a man said you relax nothing will happen the angel of the Lord whose I am stood before me this night and told me there will not be any loss of any life How come that somebody in the midst of such circumstance will do that? Did I not hear the, the testimony of a brother that kidnappers picked here on this road a number of years ago? I think the brother came here and then went out there and stood and then entered the vehicle but behold it was the vehicle of a, a ritualist or kidnappers and then they sped off and then as they reached the junction of our back they veered right instead of continuing to worry and sped off and his own was finished and then suddenly as he was muttering some prayer something began to tell him in his mind according to the testimony if you don't act now you are finished you must act and I learned that a brother as he was musing on the something he came to a point from where he was he bounced on the steering Holy Ghost and bounced on the steering and began to struggle with the steering and the vehicle veered off and the vehicle somersaulted and then threw all of them inside the bush and then villagers thought that that vehicle only had an accident and rushed and these people vamoosed that's how he was saved Holy Ghost was saying do something Or you are finished. Spirit of conviction. Spirit of opening eyes of understanding. We are said it. Who made who made Abraham to know that these are not people of this country these men that are coming they are not ordinary men let me ask you were they wearing white and they had wings that showed that they were angels I'm asking you they were dressed in the dressing of the people of the land the dressing of that time They didn't have some some hairy hair. Ooh. 
And the thing was like the hair of God. To make Abraham to know. Nothing like that. But the spirit of God inside him made him to know that these are angelic beings. Oh, that's the work of the spirit. How can you remain in this Christianity in the present day? And then you will pass and go to heaven from this present day. From this day, everything is attacking you. Everything on the road is attacking you, attacking the faith. Every word you hear is attacking your mind. Am I right or wrong? How can you remain? Let's read. First Samuel 17. Let's go back. So I can round off. Not plenty of talk. First Samuel 17. You know the story. Goliath has had messed up even such a person like giant, giant man like Saul who was tallest among of all Israel. And now he was fidgeting and his, his soldiers were fidgeting. And then this ruddy man, this young boy came into the place and verse 26 said, And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Let me ask you, when David asked that question, whom was he having in his mind? You? Saul? What shall be given to the man who was the man David was referring to? <laughs> Himself. Now, how come that you come, a young person, 17 years, and you see this person that is 13 feet plus? Even seven, six feet person, there is nobody seven feet here. Did you hear what I said? Is anybody listening to me? If you are seven feet, stand up. If you are up to seven feet, nobody. You may be six feet, you may even be six feet six, but I wouldn't say stand up because if I tell you to stand up, you will say, I am tallest. And then go may enter into your heart. So I won't tell you to stand up. I know something. But we may not have somebody six feet six. We may have people six feet two, six feet three. Or let us assume we have six feet six. But that is about half of the size of Goliath. So you are, you are half of Goliath. And then for this David to say, what will be done to the man that will kill this person? Something was, something was inside him. Did you hear me? It is the best of things. Did you hear? The best of things that you can have is the Spirit of God. The conviction of the Spirit and the humility of the Spirit and the understanding of the Spirit and the love of the Spirit and the patience of the spirit, the spirit of patience, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowing that, look, I don't have sufficient knowledge in this matter. This person has.
It is the spirit that can make you to have patience and told you to wait and you waited and you are not in a haste this is my friend that I told you that came in here he made a comment when I said something he said I know you you are one of those people that take uncommon decisions is a spirit that will make you endure listen to me it is a spirit that will make you when you are yielded when you are conquered it will make you endure you will not there will be no ego you will not be saying look at how they treated me because you don't have personality again listen you don't have personality again. That is the reason sometimes I say things and people misunderstand the something that I say. I've come to the level and I said, let me say it again. Let somebody come and be the GS. And I mean it. So I can prove my superiority by my response. I will not turn around and say, come take counsel from me. I started the church. The church is mine. I will never do it. And I will not be hot. Have you reached there? Have you reached? Come and take. I've told the Lord very many times, let it not be by death. Let it not be by sin. Let it not be by being tired and worn out and then throwing in the towel. Let it be as a matter of proof of what I am claiming. When the spirit has not dealt with your mind, you still have ego. You still recognize yourself. So, if I need him more, you need the spirit. Look at this. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 26. And as they led him away, the led hold of one Simon, a Cyrenian, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they led the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Now, Verse 32, and there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one, of the, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Let me branch and try to make you a little, uh, what do I say? A little smile. Uh, some time ago, long, long ago, um, some man of God, well educated, a lecturer in the university, was reading the Bible and then where he was reading is in Genesis chapter 11 somewhere there when the Bible says and God came down and saw that the people is one people is one and the man said don't accuse me I am reading Bible don't say that I don't know English <laughs> now why did I bring that in my previous preaching, when I read this verse, I pronounced it malefactors. And then one of our officers 
pronounced it recently to my hearing, malfactors. So if he is wrong, if I am wrong by malfactors, it is his problem. He led me astray. So I got confused as to whether it is malfactor or malefactor. So let me follow him, malfactor. <laughs> Let's go back. Verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow. Wow. Join it with Acts of Apostles. Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, and verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye, out, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Now, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. What happened in the end of the day? Look at chapter 7 and verse 54. When they heard these things, they were caught to the heart, and then gnashed at him with their teeth, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. What made him to see the glory of God? I am asking you. And the glory of God that he saw overwhelmed him and he couldn't, he couldn't uh, but say what he said. Overwhelmed him. He was going home and said, Father, these people are ignorant. They can't see what I see. Forgive their stupidity. Now, because many people don't have the Holy Ghost, they are operating their own minds. That is the reason we are in commotion. Holy Ghost has not conquered your mind. Has not refurbished your mind. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can be baptized with the Holy Ghost and you say there is somebody there that has achma. The achma is gone and the achma is gone. But that does not make you to have the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. What you have, what you manifested is the gift. But the same person that said this thing can manifest anger that is bizarre. The Corinthian church, Paul said, in the gifts you were lacking nothing. But in the fruits you are confused people. You are not even Christians, you are babes. Something is altogether wrong with you. So, if we must in the present day and excuse one another in this present day, this world of the present day that is filled with anarchy, filled with, filled with Christ. Listen to me. The things that are happening in the society, there is no friendship in the society. There is no friendship anywhere. If you are on the plane, except you are with your wife and children, the other people that are there, you are on your own, they are on their own. Somebody may open a conversation and that's the end of it. And then, lack of friendship outside can just stray into church and everybody is on his own. And then, we don't have the Holy Ghost. How will you pray for for the people that are persecuting you at home, for the people that are speaking evil about you, how will you pray? 
how are you going to pray for people that are speaking evil or people in the church and how will you avoid hatred in the church if the spirit of god did not conquer your mind conquer your mind he can be inside you but you refuse that he should conquer your mind he will allow you to carry your mind and you will be praying with your mind and you'll be talking with your mind and you'll be responding with your mind we can all listen to me we can all lose lose lose, lose gear we can all lose control and then we'll begin to operate with our minds we need the spirit of the lord in the church badly that we may be able these are enemies stoning somebody to death but i do not know any enemy in church that is stoning you to death and his eyes opened and uh, he said, Lord, these people can't see what I am seeing. These people are wretched. Have mercy upon them. And he gave up the ghost. The same thing that the master did. That is a work of the spirit. A spirit of humility. They, they deny you of a thing and you don't care. As a pastor, you do your very best, and some people in church go against you and talking, and then, and you don't care. You didn't go fire for fire. If the Holy Spirit is not allowed to deal with us, listen to me, chances are that the things that have happened in church in some churches physical fracas that we are churches that we have begun as a result of physical fracas people fought and the present day we have stories of people who have fought fighting they come for service and in the present day we have people that have gone to court and reached the supreme court But you know, listen to me. There is a lot of court case that is going on in the watchman. A lot of court cases are going on. Listen to me. If you take that lady to that other lady, or take this brother to that other brother, One young man was telling me recently, yesterday, that some brethren, some people who, who, whom I, I, I choose to call the so-called, will come around and we speak against somebody, against this sister, and tell many, many things against the sister, and tell many, many things against the brother. And while they are traveling, while they are traveling, and then they, and when the chance upon that person, that person we're talking against, this person was telling me, he will go and greet the person and say, Bro, how are you? Fine. Why are you this and that? And this other person will turn around and say, Are you a human being? Which means he, he is saying, how come that after I've said these things, you, you, didn't, you didn't bother and you went to greet the person? Now listen to me. Many people are transferring hatred from them to other people. You transfer the hatred you are having for your husband. You go and transfer it to the pastor. 
and pastor that is foolish will buy. You transfer the hatred you have for a member of the church and then now this, 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 the, the feuding that has led to, to, to resentment. The feuding that has led to resentment. You can't pray for the person. If the person calls you on phone, you see the number, you quench it. If the person greets you, you cannot answer. You don't speak well of the person. And you go to some other person and release all those things. Listen to me. And the person that receives it is foolish. He has transferred hatred and resentment. And you took. That's why I, I will remain aloysius forever. You cannot tell me anything. And I will buy it. Hook, line, and sinker. I must need. I must need to see the other person. Or I will begin to see the person and then begin to see the person in the light that you are seeing the person. You are the person that transferred your, your mind. And I, I foolishly took it. Two of us are heading to the same destination. Church is not a place of indiscriminate friendship. Keep away from tell bearers. Church is a place of praying for one another. Church is, church is a place of, of excusing one another. Church is a place of sending matters to the appropriate quarters and leaving it there. Church is a place which reminds me, I have forgotten one of the messages. One of the messages is when a kingdom rises against itself, that kingdom must perish. And I see watchman rising against itself. That's what I am sensing. Youth posting things, parents posting things, influencing them, people posting things against the ministry. But may I inform every person that is here, you are pastors, you are the chieftains of the place. May I inform you that nothing will happen to this ministry. This ministry will be fulfilled with or without anybody. I didn't force ideas into God's mind. Learn your lesson. Get conquered. Get conquered. When you get conquered, your mind will stop operating. I lost my mind into the mind of God in 1976 at Jikapa by the corridor during break time, 1977 or so, or 70, 77. I know the day. I said I lose my mind. That is why my thinking is different. And it goes in, con in, in, in contrast to other people's thinking. Simple. My thinking is different. Get conquered. 
If you have not been conquered, you still have some ego, some self-consciousness. But did you see the people who have been walked upon by the Holy Spirit? The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of knowledge. You may have natural endowment that is different from the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Natural endowment. You may be intelligent naturally. It's not what I'm talking about. It's not what I am talking about. And you will think that that is uh, the, what we are talking about. You have brain. Your IQ is high. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of wisdom which Jesus Christ used to flow all his detractors. The thing that will come intuitively. The thing that will come at the point that is required. The kind of wisdom that Solomon requested from the Lord. To be able to rule the people. And God gave him that wisdom. We need the spirit. You need the spirit to walk with me. To follow to follow my leading, to follow me. You need the spirit. You need to be conquered. Listen, I am not in a haste. Because I recognize that I am not God. I was telling somebody, I had said it to one of our pastors, and I was saying to him, look at the rock chapel is getting set. Look at all the equipments that we are, pre we are gathering for Enugu on the hill. Enugu on the hill was given in 1999 or thereabout. And I was telling him, those people that are quick to think, those people that say, ah, he said it long ago and he didn't hold. What are they going to do now? Then I was saying to him, if we had in 1999 or 2000, now done Enugu on the hill and gone to Enugu, now we will be going with uh, these speakers that cost us uh, 30 something million naira. We will be going with that stage that costs us millions. We will be going with this. When our workforce was not up to 1,000. Listen, I have the spirit of patience. Full stop. Well, The spirit, you see, and um, some things will happen and I will go to the Lord in prayer. I say, look, I want every line of your word to reflect in my life. I don't want to manifest anything that is contrary to what is written. And when I manifest it by any means, I get pained. I cry. The Spirit gave them patience. The Spirit gave them humility. The Spirit gave them knowledge and understanding and wisdom according to what was prophesied even concerning Jesus in the book of Isaiah. And let's read.
Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Listen to me. You want to counsel, pastor, you like to sit down and counsel. Let them come so that I can counsel them. Do you have the spirit that can direct you in counseling and counsel aright? Has your mind be conquered, been conquered? You want to counsel? Do you have the spirit that has overcome your mind? Ah, please. It's not what you can buy from the talk shop there. It is what you can buy from heaven and you will desire it. You will desire the spirit to 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 just to, to crush your own mind and overtake you. The Apostle Paul said, and the life I now live, I don't live my own life. The Spirit of God, Christ Jesus, lives in me. And the Lord Jesus Christ also made the same statement in John's Gospel, chapter 14. He says, oh, praise God. John's Gospel, chapter 14, but before I read verse 14 of John's Gospel, uh, uh, chapter 14, I will read chapter 7, where he says, there is something that he says in John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The extent of the extent of the doctrine that is the truth of the word of God, the extent of the truth of the word of God that is in you is proportional to the extent of the spirit of God that is in you and what that spirit has done in your mind. I say that again. The extent of the truth of the word of God that is in you is proportional, very directly, is proportional to the extent of the the extent that is the, the, the volume of the Spirit of God that is in you and what He has done in your mind. Otherwise, you will be carried away with some fanciful things. Is that not the reason? You are buying some fanciful things, some fanciful language, and they look nice to you, some fanciful music, and they look nice to you, and you want to ab adopt it into our church, and you are ad I want to adopt the things that you see into our church, and you are on your own, and you consider us old school, that is because you have not been dealt with. You are a babe if you are still born again. And then they gave you to be a pastor. I stumbled into some Christian 
activities a, on a channel, DSTV channel, a particular channel, a dedicated channel where they, where they allow people to do one thing or the other. Listen to me. I stumbled into ecumenism. I stumbled into a, into a, into a Christian gathering. The Reverend Father was there. The Reverend Sisters were there. They did their own. The Pentecostals were there. And these other people were there. I stumbled into another one at, uh, that was held at Ecumenical Center, Abuja. And then these people were there. And these people were there. And everybody came together to pray. I have a spirit. Don't get offended. And as I was washing that thing, I heard the voice of the Lord. At a point, one lady wearing this string of a thing, all armpit open, and raised her hand, and they were singing majestic song, and then they were dancing, and people are, are speaking in tongues and all that. And I heard a voice say to me, false religion. False Christianity. But if you don't have the Spirit of God to that extent, you are not dead with your mind, how will you know? How will you know? You will say, but these people are speaking fantastic things and uh, you see, and their prayer, they have testimony. That's what you'll be saying. My friend, choose you which church you will attend and choose you which pulpit. Now, Beginning from this year, when we resume in that workshop, I am building pulpit of many colors. They, they will all be built in this workshop. I will give them the design, wood, but it will be a, my own, it's just a table. It will be a good pulpit. You can be sure it's going to be nice. And I will dedicate them. And then all of you will come and carry your own. Good. Good. You are happy about it. And you are fine to be happy. But let me give you information. That's why my preaching is different. That thing that I'm going to do is both glorious and dangerous. And I must do it. Now, you stay behind that pulpit that I built. The pulpit of many colors that have been told you that came by inspiration. And you stay behind it. And you preach and go and commit sin. Let's wait. Every pulpit, every pulpit in Watchman, Anybody that can transport his own to, to uh, uh, UK, you have to transport it. If you can't transport it, I will build it in such a way that it is assemblable. That is, we build it in parts and then we assemble it. Put it in a package and you put it in your checking bucket. Pocket. I mean it. Immediately after this December, I am giving them the design. By the time I come with my messages and I show that this minister, you see, Washman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Eh? Washman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. I am coming with a message that says, What a ministry! What a vision! what a mission we have. I will prove it that it's not a place you can be and refuse what I am saying.
This is another John the Baptist ministry. You know, you need the spirit. You need the spirit to open your eyes to show you about Christianity. The type that I am preaching. The type I am preaching. The life I am preaching. If I were you, Somebody cannot come to me. Ah, well, wonderful. Do you know that somebody that left, it was people. Somebody went to him and said, and he told me that, and said, At your, as, with what you are manifesting, you don't need to be under anybody. And he agreed. And he told me that. You don't need to be under somebody. You must be lost. See you now. Don't need to be under somebody. See you. You don't need to be under somebody. Yes. You must be under yourself. And he agreed. Some people among you, you have gifts. Listen to me. I've told you this thing. What determines, I am going to talk about apostle. I am going to talk, unless time will not permit. I'm going to talk about prophet. I'm going to talk about evangelist. I'm going to talk about pastor. I'm going to talk about teacher. And I am going to show you how that there are no two apostles in a particular given assignment. And you listen to me. You can be a prophet there. You can be a miracle worker there. But I want to inform you that being a miracle worker does not equal you, equate you with apostles. No. You have to know the truth. I am not telling you because I am involved. If another person was involved and I am given to preach, I will tell you. John the Baptist did not heal any headache. Did he? Did he? But of all men born by women, of all ministers, of all prophets born by women, there has never arisen anybody equal to John the Baptist. But he did not lay hand upon anybody and the person got healed. He had a ministry that was superior to every minister. And the watchman has a ministry. You see, the reason I am pleading with people we are uh, uh, backing out and people will pursue this and people are saying this and now uh, and we are lacking personnel and our Lord Jesus is involved in many things. Is it not because people have eyes of understanding darkened? By the time I finish preaching it, you and you understand God if God opens your eye, eh? If God opens your eye, you will sell your house and come and build the rock chapel. I am telling you, when you come to know the vanity and the uselessness of the things that you are amassing and keeping your talent and then wanting to use it for this world in order to get money build this one build that one i didn't tell you that building house is not good it's not what i said i didn't tell you that riding car is not good it's not what i said i am not envious 
he makes no meaning to me. Ride your aeroplane, no problem. But be a child of God. I didn't tell you don't ride, ride my own. Please, let's get the Holy Ghost. Conquer us. You will begin to enjoy. You will understand me. You will understand the rule. The rule in Christianity. You will know how to move away from people that want to say this, and want to say that, want to chip this one in. Let me chip this one in. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you about this old person. Let me tell you about so so pastor. You will say, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Go and pray. Let's rise up. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in our life. Open my eyes to see Jesus. See them upon the throne. Sing it very well. Oh. 